The ingredients for our apple pie are very basic. We fill our flaky buttery crust with Granny Smith apples. If you follow these three basic rules, you will always have a terrific pie crust. Use quality ingredients, make sure they're very cold, and remember, when you handle dough, less is more. Let me show you how. We start off with two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's one. Now, I always prefer an unbleached flour. It has a little bit more flavor and the color is a little creamier. That's two and a half. A teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and then we have two sticks of butter that it's unsalted. And just flake this in. Okay, and then we're just going to give this a really quick pulse just until we see those pea-sized pieces of butter within the flour. And I can see that that's just about ready. Alright, so now I start with about a half a cup of water, but I only add a quarter cup at a time. And then if the flour can absorb it, I'll add the other quarter cup. Give it another pulse. Now, you can see that when I pinched it, it's holding a, a shape. So, I'm going to say that this, this is ready to go. Now, you can still see some butter pieces in here. That's what's going to give us the flakiness inside of the crust. Now, if I was to roll this out right now, I might have a little resistance from the gluten that we developed. So, I'm just going to wrap it in plastic and let it rest in the refrigerator for an hour. I take a piece of plastic wrap. Just lay it on your countertop and just eye out roughly half. And then using the sides of the plastic, I just bring it up to the front and pull it in towards the center. Again, you're not trying to touch the dough itself. Okay, okay now that's it. That's enough for either the bottom or the top of our pie. And then you just do the same. Just use that plastic again to bring it up into the center. Now I'm just going to refrigerate this for at least an hour before I roll it up. When you're ready to roll out your dough, sprinkle the work surface with just a little bit of flour to help keep it from sticking. Now the dough is nice and cold, so I want to work as fast as possible and I rotate my dough, I don't move my pin. That's going to help me to have a nice uniform thickness, handling the dough as little as possible. And if you have an offset spatula, that really helps to free up the dough without using more flour on the bottom. You want to make sure that you have an inch and a half of dough all around the pie dish. So what I do is I put my rolling pin down, flip the dough up, and gently roll it back so that dough wraps around the rolling pin. Now, I'm starting with my second dough, and this is going to be for the top of the pie. So I want to make sure that this is going to cover all the apples and have a little bit of an overhang. Okay, this is just about ready. Now, just like before, I'm going to roll it on the pin, and I'm going to unroll it onto a parchment line rimless baking sheet. This way I can get it off easily later. And you want to refrigerate these while you prepare your apples. You'll need about four pounds of apples. That's about eight to ten apples. You want apples that are sweet and crisp that won't break down too much in the oven. Good baking apples are Empire, Gala, Cortland, and Granny Smith. I'm using all Granny Smith, but you can mix it up.
First I peel all the apples. Then I cut them in half, core them all. Then I slice them into quarter inch thick slices. To prevent these from discoloring and to add a little bit of flavor, we're going to take two tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Just the juice, not the zest. It's a big lemon. And another half. Okay. Just give that a quick toss. You want to try to coat those apples with the lemon juice before you go ahead and add the rest of your ingredients. Okay, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And then we're going to add a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and the cinnamon, which is one teaspoon. And you want to kind of spread that all around because as soon as that cinnamon hits those apples, it really does stick a little. And half a teaspoon of salt. All right, so now we're just going to toss this. I like to use my hands so I can get really right to the bottom. And now carefully put these in. Keep pressing down. Now you see all of this. This is a mixture of the flour, the lemon juice, the sugar. We just want to pour that over because that's going to help thicken this pie. So to finish the pie, we have two tablespoons of cubed butter. And just place it all over. This is going to give it a nice smoothness, a little bit of richness, and definitely a bunch of flavor. Now a little bit of egg wash to seal those edges. Now in our egg wash, we just have a whole egg and a little bit of water to thin it out. All right, and now we're ready for the top of the pie. I'm gonna roll it back around my pin. Bring it over. Make sure that my edge touches my edge and unfold it. You can take my paring knife very carefully. Just start to go around the pie and trim it. Just a little more here. Now, go right to crimping. Form a little V with your finger and with your thumb, you insert it. Now, put on our egg wash very carefully, making sure that you get a nice even egg wash coating because where you don't touch the pie with the egg, you're going to have an area without the same coloring as the rest of the pie. Okay, and that's it. And then for the final touch, I use sanding sugar, a generous amount. And if you don't have sanding sugar, you can use granulated sugar. And now I'm going to cut some slits for a venting so that steam can come out. It's about seven slits. So this goes into a 450 degree oven for 20 minutes. Then I reduce the heat to 375 degrees and bake it until the filling is bubbling. And that takes about 50 to 60 more minutes. After you take it out of the oven, you'll be tempted to cut right into it. But you really need to let it sit for at least six hours. That way, when you cut into it, the juices won't escape. Put this everyday food classic in your cookbook. With this recipe, you'll see just how easy it is to make a delicious apple pie.